And welcome back. Yet another opportunity to share really good stuff. And Lord knows we can all use it. Uh, today's guest I met um, two years ago. I met him in the company of Ray Lewis. He was really involved in a, in a charity. And he does so much from sports science to podcasting to marketing, content development. He's going to be an awesome guest. Please welcome John Brankus. Man, the applause are deafening. Thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for joining me. You are uh, nestled in your uh, in Park City, Utah. Can't be bad, right? That's right. We're in Park City right now. Um, actually, moving down to Atlanta, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good time. Um, uh, Atlanta is a great town. I love Atlanta. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I am really, really, really grateful. Um, things are going good. How are you doing? You know what? No one ever asks me. That's I, the best. I know. That's why I'm asking so, you. I want to know how you're doing. Now I know why you're so good at what you do and why they call you the emperor. See? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's just word on the street. That's not a nickname I gave myself. I, I am. I, I walk out the door and people are yelling emperor and I don't know why. I am fantastic. I get to spend my afternoons listening to good stuff from people like you and you've done so much good stuff as it relates to sports science philanthropy i don't even know where to start but why don't we start with sports science i'm sure many of the people that are watching this today remember you from your espn show which was phenomenal and still is so why don't we start with uh you know what's happening with that yeah man i mean sports science uh you know ran 1800 episodes and you know was very fortunate to win a bunch of awards and write a best selling book and uh, it really has launched me on that trajectory of um, making some fantastic relationships and really finding that audiences love to be entertained and educated at the same time. Um, I feel very blessed that you know I've been able to be involved with stuff that's purely positive. You know, I never you know we owned our the production company that made uh, sports science and never wanted to you know be sort of you know involved in a program with like you know people yelling at each other and all that kind of. Uh, you know, entertainment. I wanted to be always involved with stuff that's very positive. So, you know, sports science really launched, launched me on that trajectory. And, you know, we had, you know, so many shows that branched off of that. And now, um, you know, with, with sports science, I have soul and science. I'm, you know, the CMO for a company called Kill Cliff, which is a clean energy drink. Um, you should check them out at Kill Cliff, K I L L C L I F F.com. Amazing. Amazing. Founded by Navy SEAL, um, run by a Navy SEAL now. It's just it, the clean energy drink because energy drinks can be so toxic. And this is a drink that's actually good for you. Um, you know, I have contracts, um, you know, do content with the UFC and with Intel and Toyota and lots of big companies. So things are going really well. And I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to be in this position. You know, we all are, are sort of sitting in this odd place uh, in the world right now where we're not sure what's coming on, uh, around the bend and what's next. And you know, I think that what you're doing is great. You know, there's, there is a lot of good news out there. And I think that, uh, you know, people need to hear about it. Yeah. It's uh, really been uh, a blessing for me as well, that my career has led me to a place where people actually want to listen to me, you know, uh, for years, people paid me to shut up. So now it's kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, Oh my God, we want to listen to him. So I'm yeah. fortunate that like you, my network is broad. I've traveled, I was always one of those guys that wanted to just meet people to hear what they do and yeah. how they do it. No surprise that we met through our mutual friend, Rob Vaca, who I adore. Yep. You, he and I share this philanthropic uh, nature. Why don't you share some of uh, what you've done in philanthropy, some of it that you've done with Ray? Yeah, Ray and I started um, you know, a charity called Ray of Hope um, that Rob Vaca was also a part of. And it really was about sending out messages of inspiration to people in need. You know, we're all interconnected with technology. So it, we felt like we were, you know, one degree away from anybody um, to get an inspirational, personalized message to someone who was in need. So, you know, we felt that felt that, that was a really great um, way to connect with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, you know, that's been doing really well. And also just, you know, involved with other charities like the Challenge Athletes Foundation is an incredible charity. Um, gentleman named Bob Babbitt, who's a very dear friend of mine, runs it. Um, and, you know, it really it gifts um, athletes, you know, who may need a prosthetic, who might need a leg or an arm. Um, it gifts it to incredible athletes so that they can go on in life and, and really thrive. So, 
Um, in terms of charity, you know, that's something that I've always been really passionate about. I was fortunate to be at the event in Atlanta that you guys threw with Ray yep. and saw one of those stories firsthand. And there was not a dry eye anywhere near that place. Right. So, you know, the, the work is great. But when you get a guy like Ray Lewis, who is so passionate and really is a preacher in his own right, um, it, it was really cool uh, to be part of. And, and, you know, I wrote about it in my book, but I believe that as human beings, we're supposed to get involved and do good. And, you know, hence, hence this show. I'll shift gears for a second and talk about um, your podcast because you did a whole bunch of those too. Yep. And some of the guests that you have on, I want to just sort of dig into, you know, what are some of the highlights? Like for me, I know that you interviewed Michael Gervais and, yeah. or Gervais, I'm really not sure how you pronounce it, but yeah, sure, right. one of my favorites. So just talk to us about some of the great people that you've had on and some of the things that jump out, at, you know, for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the podcast I did was called uh, Brink of Midnight. Um, you can find it on, you know, out, you know, anywhere that uh, where podcasts are. And, you know, I really was just fortunate to be able to to dip into my Rolodex of people who have gotten to know over the years. Um, so whether or not it was Ray or Damon John or, you know, Randy Couture, or, you know, Dr. Drew or Dr. Oz or whomever, you know, we got amazing stories about the moment in life when everything changes, um, which is very apropos for right now. Um, you know, everybody has that that inflection point, that thing that happened where their life could have gone one way or the other. Uh, so there were some incredible stories um, that that really arose from that. And it's amazing how people make a can make a single decision. People can, um, you know, literally the, like the idea of like, you know, I wake up one day and my life is completely different. Um, that certainly applies to my life. You know, I met my wife uh, sitting on a plane. So I got on a plane, sat next to her, fell instantly in love. This was in Denver, and turns out what you know, we both fell in love with each other. We both said, "Hey, we're going to get married." I told a friend we're getting married. She told her parents we're getting married. Turns out that we lived two blocks away from each other on the same street in L.A. So in a yeah. blink of an eye, everything wow. changed. Um, wow. So obviously, you know, life never would have been the same if if that hadn't happened. You know, we have two beautiful kids and you know, wonderful life, and all because you know, I was willing to you know talk to this beautiful human being who I sat next to on a plane. You know, I actually speak to people through the sales lens, trying to teach CEOs and, you know, VP of sales that really you just never know until you talk to somebody. No coincidence. I, too, met my lady by chance. I was in Dallas and I reached out to a friend of mine. I said, hey, you busy tonight? She goes, I'm going out with some of my girlfriends. And it turns out that my friend's best friend is now, you know, I call her my first lady, you know, so, That's you know, awesome. it's just those kind of things you tend to realize are not as random as one might, might, might suggest. Yeah. You know, it's all about, uh, Steven, Steven Soderbergh's had, had a great, um, you know, had a great expression. I did an independent study with him and he said, talent plus persistence equals perceived luck. Be ready when it happens. And I think wow. when you talk about that, the kind of person you are, which is the talent, plus doing it over and over and over and over, you know, in, in practice of being persistent leads to perceived coincidences, perceived opportunity, perceived. It's just you never know how it's going to intersect. But if you stay tried and true to what you really believe in, what you believe is right, you attract that same kind of energy and then that same kind of energy is returned. It's it's like this cycle. Positive energy begets positive energy. Negative energy begets negative energy. So which one do you want to choose? Live a great life? Live a terrible life? You want to live a life of fear? You want to live a life of hope? You, have, you attract that same kind of energy. So it's very interesting to me how true that principle really is. You know, when I bring that up in the corporate boardroom and I talk about the laws of attraction, people look at me hokey and I'm going... It works. You know, it's it, you absolutely what your, you know, your thoughts attract things. Yep. And, so, you know, so I, I, I love that. You said that I'll shift gears again. You said that you're creating content for W um, for UCF and some of the other big organizations. UFC. Yeah. You, whatever. Sorry about that. Um, matter. Can you dig in to a little bit of what kind of content is it? Sure. Science based or is it, yep. you know, 
We're doing a, a show called Fight Physics for uh, the UFC, um, which is all about, obviously, it's essentially sports science for uh, the UFC. So we have some of their top fighters uh, breaking them down at the uh, Performance Institute in, in uh, Las Vegas, which is just an incredible facility that UFC has built. Also doing content with Intel. It's called Soul and Science. It's looking at the tangibles and intangibles um, of, of athletics. We're shooting in a um, a proprietary dome that has a hundred and you know, hundred plus cameras shooting at eight K simultaneously. We had Aaron Gordon in, had Kerry Walsh in, had some just incredible athletes, um, like sports science and it's going to be an AR app. Um, so you'll be able to download it in a couple months. Um, actually you'll be able to download it later this month in May, uh, with the first episode and we'll be re releasing episodes for a couple months. Um, it's just incredible technology. Uh, so it's like sports science on steroids tech in terms of technology. Um, you know, making lots of great content with uh, Kill Cliff, um, the clean energy drink. We have a new show called Because We Can. And uh, every Friday I do a show that's, you know, something that could be off the wall or inspirational, um, uplifting simply because we can. So the first episode we had Ray on and Sage okay. Steele and Bear Grylls and uh, really talking about how to be resilient um, in this new age. Um, so it's it's great to just work with um, companies and people who really are on the same page in terms of just being positive and really wanting to perpetuate good in the world. I mean, you're so right. The timing of that kind of content really couldn't be yep. at their time. I mean, li literally, you know, as somebody who understands the value of content in general, so such pointed content, such, you know, teaching people and showing them, you know, through an emotional tie that, hey, you, you know, you can fight through it. I mean, it, it reminds me the biggest lessons I've had in my career have come from the worst case scenarios where I thought it was over. And to your point, you pivot or you do something that you look back and you go, wow, I really did that. You know, that's yep. pretty, pretty incredible. So all of the things that you've done, which just listening to you, it does sound pretty amazing. You've, you're around great people. What have you taken away for you? What is, you know, JB, you know, how do you manage your life? What's your routine? What, what, you know, what drives you? You know, what's always driven me is making something out of nothing. I love just, being creative and thinking of something that doesn't currently exist and then manifesting that and making it happen. Um, I love the idea of, you know, you can sit around and think something up and somehow it can become something tangible that affects people. Um, and I, that, that's really what drives me every day. You know, I wake up and I'm like, how do I make that happen? And how do I create something? So I, I feel a lot of satisfaction um, in terms of doing my best by creating. Uh, that, that's what I feel. Um, you know, when people say, oh, I think that I'm good at that. I think that that's what drives me is just making stuff. And I want to make stuff that's positive and will have a positive impact on people. A lot of people will refer to something like sports science and they'll say, you know, oh my God, you know, you, you won a bunch of awards and was on ESPN and, you know, you, you got to work with the world's greatest athletes. Honestly, and all that stuff is just a byproduct of doing your best and trying. I honestly was having a total blast even before that, you know, all the like little projects that nobody's ever seen and, you know, didn't reach anyone. I was still doing my best and trying my best. So, you know, success gets measured, not in the number of people who you reach, but really in the, really in judging yourself of, did I do my best? And can I live with myself when I look in the mirror at night? And I really, I really try to say, yes, I did my best. Um, and when you don't, you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and move on. Uh, and that's, you know, I feel like today, you, you know, in the, in the sort of COVID state that we're all in, the, it, people kind of lose sight of you need to do your best and just be happy with that. You know, if the rules keep changing, if parameters keep changing, if conditions keep changing, you can't be too married to what you think the outcome should be. You should really, it, it sounds like a cliche, but enjoying the journey rather than destination, the destination uh -huh. It's way more important because you never know where you're actually going to arrive. And I love to point to, do, you know, does it matter if you win the championship or win an Oscar or win an award or anything like that shouldn't be what you need because you can have a miserable journey and, you know, cause all kinds of havoc and have this great reward at the end that ultimately is empty because you, you, you had a, you know, you destroyed everything in your path 
or you can have this incredible positive path and who knows where it leads, right? It leads to leaving positive energy and, you know, awards or money or whatever, you know, however you gauge uh, success traditionally, it's really about what you do every mo every moment of every day. It is absolutely no surprise to me that you're as successful as you are. You have this very infectious uh, sort of little boy smile, if you will. <laughs> and, um, I, I would work with you any day of the week. If any, I, if if only I were a little boy. Look at this quarantine; it's done nothing for my shade of hair. Look at how look how long my hair is. I look like a I look like a chia pet. You know, whatever. That's so. Finally, being bald is is an advantage. You know, exactly. I, I give, like, give myself a haircut every day. Exactly. So uh, you, you have been a fabulous guest, no surprise. Um, how do people get in touch with yep. uh, giving the drink? Because I'm going to be looking for that as well. So tell me. Sort yeah, of go to uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm mostly on Twitter. Go to yep. uh, at John. It's uh, at John Brinkus underscore. Um, also, check out Kill Cliff. I mean, I, I when I say I've been approached by so many companies to rep oh, products, and I only rep things that I truly believe in. So go to Killcliff, K I L L C L I F F dot com. Check it out. It's the clean energy drink. There, there is a problem where people are drinking too much synthetic caffeine, too much sugar. You know, this is nothing fake, nothing artificial, and it tastes amazing. Um, so check out uh, Killcliff. You know, and be on the lookout for Soul and Science, the app um, that's going to be coming your way uh, from M Intel. Well, you and I are going to stay in touch. If there's any way I or anybody in my universe can help you. I'm sending you good vibes. Can't wait till we're somewhat normal again and we can go have a have a pop when we're in Atlanta. Absolutely. I'm going to hold you to that because I got Guaranteed. some great things coming up that I'm going to need you for. Guaranteed, man. I, I would It would be my honor. I wow. choose, like you, to work with people that I enjoy and good things happen to me all the time. And so people say, wow, man, you have this great life. And I go, it's the people in my life Yep. that dictates the success, not the other way around. So I can't wait to share this with my audience, to dissect it. You had what I call knowledge bombs. And <laughs> for me, every day, I try and have an aha moment. Yep. And I must have had five of them today. So thank you so much for spending the time. You truly were uh, spectacular. And I can't wait to do something with you. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you so much. Super good, my friend. You stay on the ball.